Hi, Albert. Um, what is the key outside of the obvious of just sticking your hand up as far as you can to do blocking kicks? Because you've been good at it. Um, I would say it all starts with practice and the preparation of it because special teams is just as important as a defensive rep or offensive rep. And honestly, the secret to it, there is no secret. Um, you take every rep as serious as you can, as hard as you can for within those three to six seconds. We just got the knockback we needed. I stuck my hand up and by the grace of God, my hand was right there when the ball came and we blocked it. What, what got you to Texas A&M a couple of years ago out of LaPorte High School? What brought you here? So I always loved the school. And growing up, my older brother was a fan of the school. And my uncle was also a fan of the school. And my uncle passed away. And then my older brother passed away as well. And they never got the chance to come here. So I wanted to take that chance for them to carry their will and what they couldn't do to live it out for them. And also outside of them, this is also a great community. The fans are just, they're wonderful. They bring the energy, the juice. And even when we have times where we may not play our best, they're still there to support us. And support is something that is very, very deeply rooted within me. We'll go back behind the lights to Tyler Shaw on the left side. Albert, uh, what does it say about your uh, just the depth of this defense? I mean, you guys were without, especially in the secondary, very thin. Um, but new guys kept stepping up and were able to have a defensive performance like you did on Saturday. Um, our depth, it's 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 beautiful. I will say that I love it because we're we're able to keep people constantly fresh, rotating, and we all trust each other. We all built a bond to where we know within each other that whoever's out there on the field with us all 11 of us will all be confident within each other because we're all knowing what we're doing. And our depth is really, it's really just beautiful. I don't mean to repeat myself, but I just can't stress it enough because without our depth, I don't, I believe we will still be the team we are, but it just brings a significant value that I can't properly put into words. We'll go to the middle on the right to Ben. Hey Albert, just following up on the field goal block, how do you balance uh, I guess it seems like just across the game with a lot of different teams, uh, there's sort of a, I don't want to say a reluctance, but definitely a bit of caution trying not to get a penalty, I guess, for you guys on the inside, making sure you're not getting a leverage penalty and a cheap first down for them, but also still trying to make that play. I'm curious just as those kicks unfold, how you balance you know, trying to be aggressive and making a play if you see an opportunity while also you know, not drawing you know, those consequences. Um. I would say it's just the same as when we're playing a defensive rep because field goal block is a defensive rep, but when we're a defense, like 11 on the field and an offense is on the field, it's just the same way we have to align. We can't align off sides. We have to know, you know, not to shade the, the snapper within the field goal and just play, play, the, play the game. There's nothing special to it. It's a, the same way we align on defense. It's the same thing we do with special teams, and we execute it to the same level each and every play. We'll stay on the right side, second row to Olin. Hi, Albert. Um, <clears throat> first off, uh, can you tell us, would you mind tell us what your uh, uncle and brother's names? Um, well, my brother's name was um, Lance, and my uncle, I, I would rather not say. Okay. Um, so, um, the issues stopping the run the other night, how much of a, um, are y'all alarmed at that, that Miami had some, uh, success running the football and what do y'all think y'all have to do to, you know, to be better at that? Um, I mean, yes, Miami did run the ball. I will give it to them. I give them my respect, but I think just as a unit, we just need to execute a little bit more. Because there, there were times that we gave it our best, but we could have just, we lost it by an inch, if that makes sense. We, we could have gave a little bit more effort within ourselves to take an extra step further to stop the run. And there was times they're gonna make plays, there are times we're gonna make plays, but we knew that if we kept doing what we were doing, we would fight and fight and fight to stop the run game. 
and we had times where we did stop it, times that they kept the drive alive by getting extra yards from the run. And I would give them my respect for that. But I think as a unit, we just we need to dig a little bit deeper within us to stop the run game. We'll go to the left side, front row to Zach. Albert, you guys run a lot of three-man fronts. Uh, how hard or how much harder does it make it to put pressure on a quarterback when you've got three defensive linemen up against five offensive linemen? Um, I don't think it makes it any much more difficult. I think it's just all within us. If we want to get to the quarterback, we will get to the quarterback, and that is the objective. And we're not gonna we're not gonna allow the numbers to define our chances of success. Regardless of if we have four defensive linemen against five offensive linemen or three, like whoever's up, we're gonna rush to the best of our abilities to get to the quarterback every single time. We'll stay on the left side, second row to Cease. Yeah, you, are have, you did have some problems with the run game, but now what happens when you get in the red zone? Because so far in two games, you forced a lot of teams either to field goals or stop them. Has anything changed, do you feel, the defense when the other team gets close to the goal line? Uh, I would say that nothing changes besides the fact that we don't like to give up touchdowns. And by any means necessary, we're going to stop them from scoring from field goals to touchdowns, but we would rather have a team put up no points at all. But I would say our demeanor doesn't change once a team gets in the red zone. I say we still have the same aggressive attitude we have. We just know that there's a little bit more consequences to letting something happen, which is the same thing as if the team was on the opposite 40 going in. They can hit a big run to the touchdown. It's the same thing, but our demeanor doesn't change at all from red zone or not in the red zone. We'll go back to TV row on the right side. Albert, a couple things real quick. Giving up nine points, obviously, you guys did a heck of a job. But a lot of times Miami was pinned up you know, on their one five-yard line and made a drive. How do you guys be better on third down and get off the field and make sure you keep that field position in y'all's favor? We just have to execute better. There is nothing more to it. We just have to execute better as a team, as a unit. And we never were a team or unit to point fingers at each other because that won't get us anywhere. We all accept it, and we know that if one person messes up, we all mess up because not that, that person isn't doing their part of the job for all of us to be successful. So we just have to execute together and be as a team, and that's really it. I'm sure you got more film to watch, but obviously the – thing with Arkansas is, is K.J. Jefferson, their quarterback. What remember from last year and just watching him and what's the challenge of stopping him? Um, you know, every quarterback I think will play will be a challenge. And he is an athletic quarterback. He can run, he can throw, he can run and throw at the same time, which is impressive because not many quarterbacks are very accurate with it. And I will say we just have to keep him contained and put pressure on him. And when we do put pressure, we can't allow him to escape and just keep them within the pocket. We'll stay on TV row and go to the left side. Albert, what's the confidence of, the, of this team like? And, and you guys feel like you know, you're ready for conference play to start in, in Arkansas on Saturday? Our confidence is it's, it's high because we trust in each other. Like Coach uh, Fisher always tells us, when you take a test and you study for it, you'll be confident because you'll know the answers. But when you don't study for a test, you'll go into the test nervous because you don't know what to expect. And it's just the same thing. We study our opponents day in and day out. And we come, we come up with the perfect game plan from the coaching staff to the players. And then when it's time to play, we execute it. And that is why our confidence is high because we trust ourselves. And more, most importantly, we trust the coaches and what they tell us to do. We'll go to the left side, fourth row to Rob. Howdy, Albert. Um, so. Coach Robinson, tell me what he's meant to your game. I mean, he's at practice. He he may be the only coach that's getting banged around by three hundred pound guys. You know, rep after rep after rep. So tell me what he's meant for your game. Um, I have a special relationship with Coach Robinson, and yes, even though we do hit him around a lot during practice, which sometimes we feel bad for him because we can just tell it hurts him. But in the end, I think it builds. It helps us build a relationship with him because he's willing to go through the drills with us and help us get better. 
and at the same time take some of the damage off. And he, he's a special he's a special man, and he's allowed me to grow into a player that honestly I would never expect myself to be. Because last year I was a red shirt, I didn't play much, and this year I am now playing, and. Coach Robinson led me down the path the entire time, and he always had trust and faith in me. Even at times when I possibly doubted myself, he trusted me, and he showed me that there is something beyond and bigger than me, and he also helped me to grow into being a better man. And seeing how he is with his family inspired me that when I have a family of my own one day, by God's grace, that I can be the best father figure and the best husband to my family. We'll go front row on the right to Brent. He's an old defensive lineman. He can handle it, right? <laughs> of course. Hey, uh, Coach, Spick, uh, Coach Fisher spoke very highly of your work ethic. And um, you're surrounded by five stars on that line. Is that something you play with an edge because of that? Uh, uh, you know, three-star recruit out of high school and so forth? No, sir. I never, never once thought about it like that. Stars, none of that. I never once looked at it as I'm surrounded by five stars. I need to play with the edge. No, sir. I just came to play my game to the best of my abilities every day. And I know that I have people beside me who came to do the same thing. And we motivate each other to play better. And you could, you could call it a, a competitive, friendly, a friendly competitive game. We're going to push each other. Iron sharpens iron. So we're both going to push each other to be the best that we can be every day without ever saying, oh, I was a five star. You were a three star. I'm better than you. Because at the end of the day, everyone who plays college ball at this level in the SEC was a four, five, three star. It doesn't matter. It's all about the grit you have when it comes to this game. How did Coach Robinson motivate you, inspire you, keep you going and during those tough times, and especially during that redshirt year? Um, <clears throat> it was it was difficult. Yeah, he he inspired me just by he constantly kept reminding me to trust him. And I did trust him, but it was more so within me. And when I opened up to him and told him that it was more so me that I couldn't trust because I felt like I was letting myself down and my family, that he, he just kept constantly repeating the words, just trusting myself and trusting God. And keep, he just kept telling me, keep trusting the process. And even though it may not look like it's getting anywhere right now, he just told me, keep trusting it and keep trusting it. And I did, and I'm thankful I did. When you get your hand on that ball, what goes through your mind, especially on a, I know you knocked down a pass as well, but especially on a field goal attempt, what's going through your mind right at that moment? Well, the first thing that went through my mind when I blocked a field goal was, where's the ball? Because I thought it had went, uh, it didn't get past the line of scrimmage. So I thought we could pick it up and play it. And then I didn't see it. So the next thing that came to my mind was, I need to celebrate. <laughs> so I had to pull out my inner <laughs> DB you know, put my arms up and tell them no good. And that was about it. And then everything else, I just had to celebrate with the team. And then the pass deflection, I just, I didn't know what to do on that one. I, that one caught me off guard. And I just had to do something quick. It was in the moment, just a reaction. All right, we'll wrap things up with Naomi on the left side, front row. With the depth that you mentioned, how do you feel that that's going to impact Saturday's game against Arkansas, Arkansas and then going further into conference play? Um, I don't think it'll make a bad impact. It'll be good for us because we can constantly, like I said before, rotate, keep people fresh, and just constantly have people who know the game and know how to play it the proper way. And the depth won't be a negative thing to us. To other teams, it may be because they may not have many people to rotate. But for us, it'll be a positive because we can constantly rotate, and like I said, keep people fresh and allow us to play the game to our best ability. All right, thank you, Albert. Yes, ma'am, thank you all.